Hey boys and girls, um, thanks for tuning in again to Monroe Live. Uh, today we have a special treat. I've got uh, E for Electric Alex on. Alex, thank you very much for coming on board. And um, so give us a little something on, uh, on how you're doing. I know you're in uh, Vegas. Why don't you tell, us, <laughs> why don't you tell our, uh, our listeners um, how you spent last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, sorry about a very boring background. I'm literally in the empty house. I literally just purchased. Yes, I did sleep on the floor tonight because I have nothing here in this house. You're probably hearing an echo, as a matter of fact. So, uh, but I'm happy, you know, I'm now going to be in between California and Nevada and see which one will win as my permanent home. Oh, very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, Las Vegas is too wild for me, but you know, you're, uh, you're a wild and crazy guy, so that's, uh, that's good news uh, for you. So anyway, um, what I'd like to ask about, and um, I think you've seen some of my comments on the, uh, on the ID4, and I hear you're buying one. So can you give us a little background on that? Yeah, so uh, I am buying one. As a matter of fact, from what I found out today, my car is somewhere in, in the U.S. already. I, um, I reserved it on the very first day. Uh, when it came out. Um, I got to see it before the launch event. Volkswagen was kind enough to invite me. Um, and I also got to drive it for a few days as well. So um, I, I, I have to say that for me, who's been driving a Tesla for, you know, since 2012 to 2018, um, you know, I was looking for, for an electric car that would suit me you know, in my life after Tesla. And I, this is the first time I decided that this is the right car for me because first of all, I don't have my Silicon Valley job anymore. I can't just spending a hundred thousand dollars on an electric car. And this price is actually very, very affordable after mm -hmm. the incentives. It's almost 30,000, but what wow. you get for this price is what impressed me. I mean, obviously the range, 250 miles, uh, that's the one that I'm getting, the first edition. Um, it has, I, I love the ID light. I think it's uh, one of the coolest new features that I've seen. Um, everything inside of the car. Uh, and I love the way the front and the back looks of this SUV, even though I'm not a big fan of SUVs, but I think it's a good looking car. Um, yeah. And all of the features that I kind of need are all there. Hmm. Well, I, uh, I said the same thing when I looked at it. Um... I, I liked it. It was a very aggressive looking vehicle. I liked the wheels especially. Uh, I think I meant uh, mentioned uh, Ben-Hur. Apparently not too many people have seen that movie. But, uh, but anyway, um, it, it reminded me of the chariot race uh, kind of wheels that, uh, that the evil guy used to try and chew up Ben-Hur. But um, I, thought, um, I thought all the way around I liked it. The only thing I didn't like was the white. Um, ours had a white... Uh, um, interior uh, parts of the interior where you put your hands and that that would never work for me I, I'm uh, I don't wash my hands enough and I get them too dirty but uh, <laughs> well actually I love the white the white interior that's the reason I want to get the uh, the first edition because yeah. you know with some proper care and possibly some you know gloves <laughs> you can yeah, you can yeah. <laughs> driving gloves would be a good <laughs> idea so um, uh, the mileage attracted you the the styling attracted you um, what did you think of the performance? So here's the thing. I'm not a performance guy at all. I oh. honestly, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not the guy who likes zero to 60 in two or three seconds at all. Um, the performance of this car uh, is in a smooth ride. That's what I'm looking for. Um, mm. I know the perform, if you're looking to take off from the you know, street lights or race this car, this is an awful car for that. But I think, mm. um, there are quite a few people like myself who want a, a, a nice, smooth ride. We don't want to beat Ferraris off of the uh, red lights. And, and the, it's still pretty, I mean, it's, it takes off relatively reasonably well. Um, and, I, and, I, and I like that. And one thing I forgot to mention, Sandy, actually, um, the fact that it's one of the three electric car models that are on the market right now that comes with a three years of unlimited free yeah. uh, fast charging. And the yeah. other two are both a hundred thousand plus, um, mm -hmm. and I, I, that really is a big deal because you know now that I have to go between California and Nevada, that would definitely help. Yeah, I um, actually the thing we released Wednesday of last week, 
um, uh, I actually had to go to one of the charging stations, and I was uh, kind of shocked that I had to pay 15 bucks for uh, for a fill up. Or not a fill up. I only got to 80 percent. And also, I was really um, I was really surprised that. Well, again, we have a slightly different view on getting from here to there, and I I have a a heavier foot than yours. So I think that um, if you're speeding with this thing, it, you're going to find that the uh, the mileage is going to is going to drop significantly, and that's what that's what we found. I can expect that from every every electric car that the realistic range is about 20 to 30 percent lower. Yeah. So yeah. when I saw the 250 mile range in my head, I go, okay, yeah. I can get 200 out of it, which again yeah. for me is more than enough. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I mean, I drive a Chevy Volt right now, and it's got what 40, 50 miles uh, on the uh -huh. one charge, and I almost never use gas. Well, and that, uh, and that really and truly um, is a determining factor for what vehicle you're going to buy. Um, I think that, um, like I said uh, in my a couple of the videos, um, if uh, if you're looking for getting from here to there, um, and you're not really interested in performance then this is probably a good car for you. But my biggest complaint was um, <laughs> was trying to get the um, trying to get the um, the information I wanted up on the screen. Um, it was stuck on uh, something that I didn't really care about. I don't care about my tire pressure and things like that. It took us um, basically the whole trip because I have a different viewpoint on things. Like when I um, when I'm um, looking at a car, um, when I'm uh, evaluating a car, I don't do it the same way as everybody else. My job is to find out what happens to the traveler who lands in LAX, um, gets off the, uh, the plane, runs to the, uh, the rental car station, in my case, National, goes to Emerald Isle, jumps in the first car that's in the pit, and, uh, and gets the heck out. I want to see how intuitive all the controls are and stuff like that. So uh, we took off like that and uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I, I have to tell you that. So in my previous life, before I, I, I started doing this full time, um, I was a graphics designer and a user experience designer for Silicon Valley companies and stuff like that. So yeah. I actually am quite harsh judging user interfaces of you know anything really, but specifically cars. And I'm quite surprised because you liked uh, Tesla interface, but you didn't like the ID ID4 interface. And no. when I got into ID4, I thought, oh my God, I don't have to learn anything. Everything is so self-explanatory. Now, you know, let me drive mine once I get it for a couple of weeks. I'm sure I'll have a few complaints. But to me, the user interface was exactly what you're saying is, you know, you land at the airport, you get a rental car, uh, you know, you're at the end of a long trip, but you don't want to be sitting for another half yeah. an hour learning how to use this damn thing. And right. my impression was the ID4 was actually quite easy to get to know. Well, I don't know, maybe it's uh, different for different people. But for me, when we got into the um when we got into the Tesla Model 3, we were already two hours late on our trip. Um, and, uh, and it was a piece of cake. Corey typed in the address to his, uh, his uh, brother's house. And all of a sudden, there it was. Boom, done. It was all up there. Plus, it told us where all the charging stations were and everything else. I, I was totally floored. I, never, I couldn't believe my eyes. I never saw anything so fast and easy. And by the way, that's another thing. I noticed that all the controls on the ID4 are slow. When you touch them, they don't instantly turn on. They kind of like dim up and come up, and then they, and you touch them again, they stay on. So being a, a very impatient kind of guy, I kept punching these things to get them to turn off, and they wouldn't turn off yeah. because... You have to. You have to wait. So uh, your your criticism is valid, and 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 honestly, uh, this car. You know, we've heard that ID three before in Europe and ID four mm -hmm. have had some software issues. You know, because Volkswagen, you know, doesn't necessarily know how to do amazing software, and this mm -hmm. is their first shot at a um, edit, and and so I I expect. Uh, things like this to go wrong. I mean, you know, if you go with Tesla, it took them a while as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give them a year or so uh, to, to get that kind of stuff right. Because right now, you know, 
I was in the software industry for a long time. I know what it's like to roll out a, uh, a you know, a piece of software and then you know try to make sure it works better and better once it's already mm -hmm. in customer hands. Um, yeah. I mean, Tesla's still doing that with uh, full self-driving. But I, yeah. um, I wanted to get back to something else that you said about the user interface. You know, you're absolutely right. Different people uh, need different access. It's, you know, when I review cars on my channel, I essentially look at it as dating. Uh, buying a new car is pretty much like going out on a first date and seeing if you're going to be a match for a while. So, you know, that, I think it's very, very different for different people. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. That's why there's so many different cars with different interfaces. And that's why I never answer this one question when people ask me. It's like, Alex, what kind of electric car should I buy? And I always say, nobody knows, including me, except for you. You pick yeah. the car that's right for you. Well, I think you cleared up two things. Um, the, interface, uh, the interface situation and how both of us kind of... Um, kind of uh, looked at it, but there's something else. Uh, you said it's like a first date. I almost never got a second date, so maybe uh, be, <laughs> being, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> aggressive uh, and whatnot is, is bad on dating. So um, my guys are writing that down right now. Sandy is a bad date, yeah. So, but <laughs> what do you think decide, how do you decide what, how you're going to uh, interface with a customer? So there's some things that are buttons, and some things that are um, sliders and uh, some things that are uh, push button and things like that. I, I, I was sitting in there and, and you know, I, I have um, basically said, I think that Tesla's got the best vehicle out there. And the first one that I ever recommended ever to anybody was a Model Y. I didn't recommend the Model 3, although now maybe I might. But I'm thinking that, um, I'm, I'm thinking there's gotta be some some trick or some rules and regulations that uh, people like yourself would have trying to figure out how are we going to design this car? Is it going to be one big screen and, and uh, touch this, touch that, all the menus sitting right in front of you? Or like we, when I, when I uh, basically gave up and just touched the blue button and let it sit, think about things for a while, and then the main screen came up. I mean, we're at the end of the trip by then, but but at the end of the day, that, that sort of thing, um, I, I don't quite understand how people would, I don't, I don't know how that works. So could you maybe fill me in a little bit on how you design things like this? So uh, speaking as a UX designer, I'm just going to switch hats, right? Usually if you're doing it right, which I don't know if that's how Volkswagen went through their process, but usually there are three different things that you consider. One you consider your current audience, right? You want to make sure that people who've been used to the current Volkswagen interface and want to get another Volkswagen, you don't, uh, you don't um, alienate, alienate uh, well, I see, I, I should never be using uh, big words, but you should never uh, make them feel like, okay, now I have to learn this car all over again and I might as well buy another car, right? You never want to Mm -hmm. make them feel left out and that they weren't considered. They want to make sure that they're having very similar experience when they go from one Volkswagen to another. Same thing with an iPhone, same thing with any other product. So that's number one. Number two, of course, you want to improve the user interface. You want to stay with the you know, latest tech. You want to make sure that the graphics is, is better, uh, the usability is better. Uh, and number three, uh, you, you, you want to make sure that your engineers can actually program whatever is behind those buttons, right? And it is a very, you know, going back to dating, it's a very uh, um, uh, a fragile dance that you do between those three. Now, mm. the key to this is to do what's called user uh, experience research. When you come up with something, you, you get a bunch of people who you believe are uh, most likely uh, good prospects to buy this particular product, in this case, you know, the ID4, um, you, you put them in the room as a focus group and you tell them, here, this is what we have. You know, poke around, pretty much what you and I did when we first met the car, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then give us feedback. So mm -hmm. then they gather the feedback and then they analyze saying, okay, well, almost everybody hated this part, so we better change that. Uh, they love that part, so we're going to keep that. And then they, you know, have to make some tough decisions on some of the other things that some people like and some people hate, like in, you know, in this case, we have a very different view on, 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 on how we like the interface. And you know, they have to make tough decisions. And uh, at the end of the day, 
engineering has to actually code it and make sure it somewhat works. So that's pretty much, in a nutshell, uh, how they would develop it. Whether or not they did it, I don't know, but that would be the right way to go about it. Mm. So I got a question. What, what do you think you're going to have a problem with? Okay, no doubt I will have a problem with the user interface. Everybody will because I will have to get used to it. Some of the things might probably still going to be buggy until some of the later updates. Uh, they're obviously on the very first version and probably some of it is still beta. Um, so I know I, I might struggle with that because I did the same thing with the Mustang Mach-E. I loved the interface originally, but once I had that car for a week, there were some things that I was like, oh, okay, I missed that. That, that mm. needs to be fixed. So, mm. you know, that's, that's, you know, as expected. Um, so I think I'll have trouble with that. But other than that, I, I really think this car is, I, I, I hate to word, I hate to use the word simple, but I'm using the word simple in a good way. Um, mm. I think it's going to be pretty simple to use and, and that would be such a pleasure. Well, and one thing that, uh, one thing that I, I absolutely was shocked at was the, there's no frunk space whatsoever. And the, um, the stuff, the, the space underneath the load floor is only like 30 mil, uh, about an inch, an inch, maybe an inch and a half um, high. And, and, uh, and, and then the, uh, the, the load floor is basically about four inches around the outside of that. So it's not, I mean, you, I don't know, you, you could hide a deck of cards maybe, seeing as you're in Vegas. But apart from that, there, there's not much that, uh, that it has there. I was really shocked at how little space there is that you can use for cargo stowage. I, I, did, I don't know if you noticed that or not. You know, I did not notice it as much because honestly, the biggest thing that I would ever carry in that car would be my uh, goalie, hockey goalie equipment, which is kind of bulky, but it definitely has enough space. I, I don't have any kids, so I can fold down the seats, no problem. And mm -hmm. um, yes, I was also disappointed that it did not have the frunk. Um, it's mm -hmm. kind of weird because it is built on their MAB system, a platform. You're right. And, you know, it's going to be used for many other cars. So why in the world they did not feel that people would complain about this, I don't know. On the other hand, I have never really, when I had my Teslas, I've never used the Franc much. And, mm. um, you know, up until I saw the Hummer EV, I did not really even like the way I interacted with the, with the Franc because the Franc still has that heavy hood that you have to smash into the, uh, into the bumper essentially to close it. It's hard to open um, until it's an automatic, you know, up and down and it's nice, mm. nice and smooth and soft, I don't really like the interaction with the frunk. But, um, you know, nevertheless, that's not an excuse. Um, I'm not going to miss it, but I think it's something that they should have done, even like Volvo did with, with their uh, cars, where it's tiny little one, where you can, you can barely put a, your lunchbox in there, but, um, yeah. but at least it's there. Well, to me, you were saying that you don't want to be too far away from, uh, from the original design. For me, it, when I opened up that hood, uh, the only thing missing was an engine. To me, it looked just like an engine compartment. Maybe they did that on purpose. I don't know. To me, I wasn't. I was surprised. It, a lot of the things that happen on the um, on the ID4 kind of remind me of uh, uh, I don't know a first attempt, as it were, at a at a at, a, at an electric car, and I, I just it, it just kind of like I was expecting a big departure. Because this is a brand new new platform, a brand new platform. I, I was thinking, um, you know, I I've already I've already come uh, uh, come out several times saying that I thought the only other guys that had a chance at um, at turning out an electric car that would be a true electric car was VW. They're the only one that I thought had the uh, potential for making any money. And I looked at uh, I looked at that car as I was expecting a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw your video about that, and I was actually a little bit disappointed by you know your comments, not by your comments, but about what they were made about. And um, yeah. you can also, you know, when I when I travel to these car shows, well, before COVID, I meet a lot of people who work for these companies, and mm -hmm. uh, almost every single legacy auto manufacturer team that's working on their electric car told me that it is still a very fragile balance and a dance. Again, we're back to dancing uh, between the 
the gas cars that they're making and essentially funding them and the future, which is electric. So yeah. a lot of this was probably still a compromise from you know the, the gas people who are still running the company uh, in terms of the income say, hey, listen, we're feeding you, so you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. And, 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 and I can only hope that they will improve and a second and third version of the MEB platform will be improved as they are mm -hmm. actually migrating to selling more and more electric cars. I, I do expect that, but again, as you probably know, these giants, they're still being fed by the uh, sales of the, of the gas cars and diesel cars, right. uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's gonna take a while. But I do have to say that I think overall, this is a, a, a decent attempt on a, a very first version of a brand new platform that they haven't, they haven't had to manufacture in decades. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I do know one thing. Um, I, I got some feedback from some of the people at, uh, at Volkswagen. Um, I, uh, <laughs> sending me from their Gmail accounts and stuff like that, saying that um, um, some of the comments that I made were made by engineers uh, two or three years ago. These are German guys. And, uh, and they were ignored. Uh, and they call them, they call them the, uh, the transmission boys. I, I don't know where that came from, but um, the transmission boys are referring to, you know, uh, transmission and engine type of, uh, type of situations. And um, they, they made the claim of um, the transmission boys don't really understand what's supposed to be happening and they're not listening to the people that were. And so consequently what happened was um, um, they got what I complained about. I, I was looking for something. I saw that outside of that car and I thought, this is it. This is going to hit a home run. These guys are going to mop the floor with everybody else. And then I found some stuff I wasn't... I mean, the outside looked great. It was something stupid like... The BMW i3 was a hideous uh, vehicle. Um, this one here was really sharp. The gaps were perfect. I mean, that car was just brilliant. I, I just was hoping, um, maybe praying, <laughs> I guess, uh, for a little bit more. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be better coming. It'll get better coming up. Yes, they're going to have to do better with their future generations of the platform. But kudos to Volkswagen Group that also owns you know, Audi and Porsche. Um, they have been committed to moving to the electric cars. Um, they've actually already unveiled and produced some good electric cars. They uh, believe the future is electric um, compared to, let's say, you know, Toyota or Honda that not only haven't really produced any for European or US markets, um, um, they have consistently uh, lobbied against them, including the last month, Toyota literally lobbied in front of our Congress uh, that, hey, 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 we don't wanna, let's not, let's not get crazy with these electric cars. People don't really wanna buy them. They're not ready for it. Um, so, you know, kudos to Volkswagen Group, especially after this whole diesel gate. Uh, but listen, if, if, if they wanna catch up to Tesla, which I think they really do, um, they will have to do better. However, this car, I'm, I'm, I'm getting behind the wheel of this one, and I think I will uh, definitely enjoy it. Well, I'm, uh, uh, like I say, I'm very hopeful that Volkswagen is going to be able to do something, uh, a step up from what I'm looking at. But I, I really, really, really think that anyone who thinks that, you know, all these regulations and all these rules that, uh, that the world is putting out, uh, I, think, uh, I think they better start paying attention. Because the guys that aren't are going to be in deep yogurt, and I, and I mean that sincerely. So I think that um, the other thing I think is that um, that diesel gate was the best thing that could have possibly happened to VW. Because Agreed. it woke them up and moved them in a totally different direction and gave them, actually, uh, they, they, they should be allowed to leap forward. They should be able to jump ahead. But like I said about these, whoever these transmission boys are, the, uh, the, the long and short of it is they, those, those kinds of people, you've got to get them out of the way if you're going to have a future. So, um, so anyway, I, um, I'm being told that we're over our time and whatnot. So what I'd like to do is just mention two things that are coming up that, uh, that you might be interested in. Um, 
they uh, they've rented me a uh, Mach-E. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to be looking at the Mach-E next week. It's going to take a while to uh, it's going to take a while for us to uh, um, you know have a look and and then um, and then and then pop them up. But that's what we're going to be doing uh, next week. And um, and the other thing that I yeah, so there's another thing I'm supposed to tell you about, but I'm not 100% sure that anybody's going to care. Um, these clowns have put together one year of bloopers, and they've been laughing their ass off at me in the back shop here, so I'm pretty sure that if they're laughing, uh, the audience will be laughing as well. Um, I may not be laughing, but there you go. So with that, what I'd like to do is thank you so much for coming on uh, on uh, our little show, our little podcast here, and um, and thank you so much for uh, uh, for being a friend for so long. And last, of course, which is best, have a good time in Vegas, but don't tell anybody about it. All righty? Absolutely. And listen, thanks for having me. It's a little weird. Normally, I have you on my yeah. channel on a monthly basis, yeah. and it's so weird to actually have to not ask any questions but answer them. But this was fun, and it's always great chatting with you. And I am so excited about the success of your channel. You started it only, what, half a year ago, and it's already kicking yeah. everyone's butt, including my channel's butt. But I like that. Well, uh, we're very happy and proud. Um, I, I try not to look too much at the, uh, that, side, that side of the business, but, but uh, I'm pretty happy that, uh, that I met a lot of people like yourself that, uh, that have, have uh, informed me and kept me up to date and, and kept me on my toes as well. So anyway, have a great time in Vegas, and I will be talking to you soon. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Okay. Bye-bye.